welcome back to the squad cast we are back um with more goodies i have so much um more to talk about about final fantasy 7 remake because i could talk about it forever <laughs> but i will not do that to you guys uh, so instead we're going to be talking about some news that i don't know about you guys i was shocked about uh coming from ea and bioware right mm -hmm. Moose? yep yeah so uh for those who who don't know for those who are unaware of the whole situation the big picture of course uh was it was it last year i can't even remember when anthem had come out anthem had come out a long time ago um 18 let me see 19? 2019 february 22nd 19. of 2019 almost uh almost two years now um we had anthem come out uh, i know it's crazy how long it's been uh, but anthem comes out uh it's meant to be this live service game kind of looks like an iron man simulator almost you got these yeah. mech suits it looks really cool really promising ended up having a ton of issues at launch the game just had no substance to it and very much failed in the attempt at being a live service game and so what happened was um ea and bioware i guess they had mutually agreed to just shut everything down on the roadmap that they had promised and try to overhaul the game completely and just create an anthem 2.0 um and that had been in development for quite a while and something that they had kept talking about and uh hinting at but unfortunately as of february 24th they have officially announced that they are shutting down development on anthem 2.0 or is what they were calling it anthem next um they said that they're going to continue to keep the game live as the service that it's running as today they are obviously saddened by what happened but then they also mentioned towards the end that in the shutdown of the development for the anthem update they're now getting laser focused on the next dragon age game and the next mass effect game then we also heard some information we'll talk about this additionally later if you guys wanted to from uh, jason schreier an insider in the industry who had mentioned that with this shutdown um i believe there was something in terms of ea providing bioware full freedom with dragon age to just make it a single player rpg rather than what it was originally planned to be in a live service game mm -hmm. so i guess a silver lining in that it's really unfortunate to see the entire situation with the game like anthem and it makes me think about a game like avengers because avengers right now is in a very similar situation where meant to be a live service came out with a complete lack of content and they're really trying to reel people back in they got a new update coming march 18th is that even going to be enough i don't know but I will say, I mean, I guess they're they're ahead of the curve in terms of Anthem with at least some sort of update for the game, like new content going out in general. But this is, I don't know, it's it's sad to see because like nobody wants to see a game fail. Um, and I think there were some good ideas in Anthem. I remember playing the beta and having a good time with it. But uh, a lot of people I feel yeah. like enjoyed Anthem, enjoyed mechanics that were introduced in Anthem. Um, it's unfortunate because I, I feel like, you know, that niche fan base there re was really hoping for a revival of uh, that franchise. Um, but, I mean, if, if they were focusing on Dragon Age. I mean, yeah, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world that this means that they're going to put all focus <laughs> in on Dragon Age. And as well, if this means that Dragon Age doesn't end up being a live service game, like, cool. Um but again, it's sad to see, like, they probably put a ton of work into yeah. Anthem. There was probably a lot of development in what this Anthem Next was going to be. Um, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's... It, it, right? Yeah, and, and as well, when you're two years after the launch of the game and you don't have the major updates going out, like, what can you do? The uh, the blog post that they put out obviously mentioned as well that they had, a, they had plenty of hurdles in development and productivity when it came to COVID and working from mm -hmm. home, which I imagine is something that has been a problem or an issue for a lot of people in game development right now. Um, and I feel for them for that reason. And you got to wonder, you got to, you got to wonder in, in another world or under different circumstances, if, uh, if this still would have happened or if maybe, you know, without them having to work from home, could they have gotten this done? Could they have hit the milestones they needed to, to get this out there for people to play? Because I really would have loved to see what this major update would have been for Anthem and what kind of new content that we're going to add into this Anthem next. 
for sure. I mean, I, I put in quite a quite a bit of time with the with the game proper after playing the beta because I was like, oh, this game has potential. Like, yeah, the game plays solid. The world looks amazing. And then playing the actual game, my those thoughts continued, and it had a lot of lore. Like, it was Bioware level lore. Like they they created a universe, characters, and stuff like that. Yeah. But then you look at it as a live service game, and this is the same thing we talk about with you know games like uh avengers for instance and you it's so uncommon now to see a game like destiny or even to a somewhat lesser extent the division where you come out and you have a solid live service model and you yeah. can pull it off um that just doesn't happen anymore and we we often and even on this show we often bring up like it can x game have a no man's sky redemption story i don't think that's that's even in the question for a lot of games anymore. I think yep. even just wishing or begging for this game to, in in this conversation, Anthem to have a redemption cycle like No Man's Sky, that was just out of the question. Like there was no coming back from that. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, isn't No Man's Sky a bit of a lower budget game in comparison to something yeah. like an Anthem or even like uh, Avengers? Although I, I don't think Avengers is going to fail on the scale of Anthem. Like I think Avengers still has a comeback story in it, or at least they're going to release whatever their first cycle or first sure. year's worth of content will be. And if they're going to leave right. it at that, they leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but I think like with no man's sky, because it wasn't as like massive in terms of budget and, and production as something like Anthem, there was that room to like put some more money into it or uh, to continue to develop it and, and upgrade it over time. Whereas Anthem, like EA put all their eggs in one basket there. Bioware really like they could not deliver clearly um and so mm -hmm. when it becomes this like a bit of a failure on launch and they don't have content to come out within enough time for people to want to continue to play that ea is just like all right we, we have to close the doors on this project you know well and that's that's what more that's what's more interesting to me with this story um you know obviously i feel horrible that this team kind of you know the people that that might have lost their jobs as right. part of being um, a part of the Anthem development crew. Um, but, um, and I, hopefully, you know, EA was able to place a lot of their employees somewhere. I, I, I'm not too sure what's going on behind the scenes with that. Um, but I, I have to have the question now with games of service, like you mentioned, uh, Aaron, like, do when is that time where you're like, okay, that's it for this game? Um, especially because it's yeah. a game of service. Like for something like Anthem, I feel like we haven't really got updates for such a long time yeah. on Anthem. Like I was even surprised that they even were developing up until the point that they were. Um, I, I feel like this could have been a decision that happened really uh, maybe a year back, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's, it's kind of unfortunate because I could see maybe, you know, EA um, was trying to kind of help the development crew here in helping them have something for Anthem. Yeah. Um, but in, in, when you have a game as a service, you know, and you look at games as a service that are successful, they have updates like every single day, or they have updates once a week. Um, mm -hmm. th that are big updates to the game. Their, their community, you look at Destiny. they're so transparent to their community in terms yeah. of what's coming up. And that's something I think that is why Avengers game is not in the same boat as Anthem. They're very transparent um, in terms of what is coming up now with their community and what they're focused on. And it seems like they have a real agenda to kind of hammer a few things out. Yeah. Um, although, yes, they have their delays. But yeah, Destiny as well, right? Uh, you the, know, it's Weekly a, resets. They got the yeah. seasonal content. Then they got their major expansion. Like Destiny just recently announced that they're delaying one of their major expansions that was supposed to come out later this year pushing it to early 2022 and everyone was like every time this happens actually a lot with destiny with the major expansions where they're like oh sorry we got to delay this we got to push it back and the whole every single time the whole community is like do your thing you know yeah. because they understand that that's just the way it is but also because they know every i think it's tuesdays there's a weekly reset you can play through the raids again you can get new loot again you can do all sorts of activities all over again and the gameplay loop is fun and it's engaging and the pvp mode is really really fun and fleshed out so there's just there's always content there for you to want to play or try out whereas a game like anthem it is fun and there is some enjoyment to be had and that is why like i was so into buying it because i played the beta and i was 
all in. Like I honestly loved it. Um, but I realized soon after that the beta was pretty much all there was to the game in terms of content. Uh, Does there, it have the um, like um, the value yeah. of, of what you get um, of just returning to that game over and over again. And I think yeah. that we have a game as service, like even Call of Duty. I always go back to Call of Duty because I'm always mm, playing sure. that. Right? Um, Call of Duty is fun for its community because you you know, you know we know exactly what to expect there's all these guns that you could level up there's different daily challenges that you could do so there's always something that you could do although it's the the core gameplay is the same um you're in the same maps you have things that could change each week or each yep. day um yep. that you want to set that goal to attain right with anthem like you just don't have that. You have yeah. no reason to return, especially if your friends are not playing it. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. So that's why I'm just so shocked that we're getting this news now. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, it could have fell off, <laughs> fell off, and like they could didn't even have to give us an update till next year, not even, and we would have forgot Anthem was even there. I I agree to a certain extent, and I I feel like a lot of these live services or live service games find themselves in between like a rock and a hard place because you sell the, your game as this is going to be a live service game. It's going to go on for years to come. That's what you expect. And if it doesn't uh, fulfill that right out of the gate, then you have to say to your audience, okay, we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to try and fix this. Yeah. And they still have that expectation that I'm going to come back to this game. It's going to be great. Me and my friends are going to jump into this new content and we're going to have a lot of fun. With Anthem and, again, to a lesser extent, Avengers, you can't just abandon ship like that that easily yeah. because you did set that precedence of we're committed to this game for X amount of time. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, to your point, Camille, like, they... I At first, I thought they did a really smart thing of just going dead silent, say, we're, we're going under, we're going to start working on this Anthem next prototype or whatever it was going to be, and we'll be back with more news. But then it was two years of just silence. Yeah. And I think that worked against them. Because, yeah, yeah, I think that they, at that point, they could have maybe just, like, pulled pulled the, pulled the lever on it and just kind of nixed it. But at the same time, like, they were working on something, but they just didn't vocalize that to the community. And that's, that's, that's something. The thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a case of announcing a game too early. I think yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. That was a case of announcing um, Anthem coming out or whatever it was called as too early. Um, just because if they were at the, if they're at the point two years later to say, no, we're closing the game. Like we're not even going to continue with Anthem anymore. They must have been thinking about that at the time of announcement that, okay, we really have to make sure that this game is going to mm -hmm. get people to play. And maybe that's what, maybe it was a business move to see how, you know, how much media outlets will pick up Anthem, like what the fans would say when we announce this new Anthem game is coming out to see if yeah. we should really continue to invest in this development of this game. Yeah. Um, and they might've got the response that they wanted, but because development needs obviously did not meet the standards that needed to be, they had to shut down. And I yeah. think that's why this is a clear example of why studios wait to announce games, why they wait to show us games. Yeah. Um, you'll hear a game announced and, and, you know, more frequently than not, we hear a game being announced. And then a few months later, we see the gameplay trailer right? Mm -hmm. It usually yep. comes up close. So, you know, when they announce that game, there's already a gameplay trailer. They have things to show that's on the back burner. Mm. You can get that with Anthem. Yeah. And that's no. troubling. And I think that's going to be a, a really big trend moving forward, especially with Cyberpunk. With what happened there, I think a lot of people are now going to be like, okay, we can't announce our game until we're ready. And we talked about this kind of like off uh, before we started and went live, but like Elden Ring, for instance. That's a game that studio's not talking about for the right reason because they're not ready to they, yep. like in, it's internally delayed the game they're just not ready and then of course like the leaked trailer and everything that's been going on uh, earlier today it's a prime example like studios now are looking at cyberpunk looking at another anthem and saying we we can't do this we can't afford it yeah but I, and i and i agree mm -hmm. very much with what you're saying about anthem next where like there was just not not a single update provided on anthem next at yeah. all in terms of not even not even just like we needed screenshots or anything but just like a blog post that said hey we're continuing to develop this this is still something we're working on 
nothing. It was the words. Exactly. It it was just, it was just, we're doing this. And then it was radio silence until they canceled the project. At least with Avengers. That shows the lack of confidence. Yes. And at least with Avengers, even though it's in a rough spot right now, they they're like, okay, well we got the next gen update coming on March 18th. We got Hawkeye coming. And then hopefully after that, they got some sort of a roadmap ready. We want to know when we're getting Spider-Man. We want to know when we're getting, you know, if, if the characters like Black Panther is going to show up. You know, there's been rumors about Captain Marvel, Scarlet Witch, stuff like that. If we see those characters showing up, I want to see a roadmap. I don't need to necessarily know that those are the characters coming, but at least a roadmap or an idea as to when we're going to get additional content down the line would be great. I know that sometimes roadmaps with live service games is digging your own grave, Destiny, almost always has a delay with any of their expansions they have coming out but at the end of the day if at least you can give people just a rough idea as to when they can expect more content they'll be more inclined to want to stick with the game if stuff gets delayed stuff gets delayed as long as the content is free which it has been which it will be then i think more people will just continue to be invested in avengers because again the content is free like the kate bishop expansion for a free DLC, it's a fully fleshed out character with an entire skill tree and like that I can fully upgrade and all that stuff. A story expansion that, albeit isn't very long, but still substantial enough for something that's free. Yeah. Um, and and everything that else, everything else that comes with her expansion, it's kind of worth it. And if I can get consistent enough updates for Avengers with new characters that give me that same value that the Cape Bishop DLC did. I'll be into it, you know. I'll be I'll be pretty invested in coming back to Avengers day in day out. Um but I just wonder if it'll have those uh, those legs to survive because Anthem clearly did not. No, for sure. And but I think it comes down to, to oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say it comes down to like two two things. It comes down to communication and consistency. Yeah. That that's it. I think I think it goes a long way for for players just to have that like check mark on a calendar being like, "Oh, this is what I can expect." whatever whether we're looking at avengers as a new character drop or an update or something like that and even if it does get pushed at least they know okay well then i know when i can come back yeah something to look forward to but just going radio silent for that long is 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 not good for the community nor the developers too i agreed agreed and and that's kind of like you know we're drawing that comparison sorry to avengers and anthem but kind of what anthem did is very similar to what the cyberpunk uh, devs are doing mm-hmm. cd project um in terms of how they're they're not addressing what the community's concerns are they're just kind of doing their own thing there's no back and forth really um and they're instead of <laughs> the only thing is instead of just going radio silence they're just talking about a lot of things that actually have nothing to do with how their game's actually going to get better. Um, but I would say, actually, with the comparison with Avengers and Anthem, I would think Anthem would have had an easier time coming out of this than Avengers, just because it's a smaller IP with more of a niche sure. audience. Yeah. If they did exactly what he was saying, you know, the com- clear communication, um, having that with that niche audience, understanding it's their audience and their fan base that will make that game successful. I think they could have definitely developed something um, that would have been better. Whereas Avengers, and you know, you look at gameplay to the type of game Avengers is as well. You know, you, Caboose, you mentioned you would go back day in and day out. Would yeah. you? Would you really though? I feel like Avengers it needs, needs a lot more work, a lot more updates, a lot more just everything in order to keep your fans coming back day in and day out. Well, I will say, like, when I'm talking new content, I'm not just saying, like, new characters and stuff. Like, we, we keep hearing about these cloning labs, yeah. you know, and, like, and their <laughs> version of raids and everything. It's like, yeah. when are we getting that? You know, if I if I had oh, something on the scale. That. Yeah, exactly. If that's I can get, like, a that's raid, a weekly reset activity that I want to mm-hmm. jump back that into was- that has, like, some rare loot for characters that I could try and get a hold of, that is what's going to bring me back. Because for Destiny, that's what it was. Every week, I would have my group of friends, and we'd run the raids. Yeah. That's what we would do. And we, have, yeah. we had so much fun doing it because for some people, they didn't have the one exotic that you need to get from that raid. For other right. people, we're just like farming to get higher gear and just upgrade our characters. you know. And for, for some people, it was even just the fun experience of the raids being good and wanting to do the activities over and over again for that reason. Or maybe wanted to get a full set of raid yeah. armor, whatever it might be. You know, There was always like just one little reason to come back 
that next Tuesday and play through the raids again. So if they can do that, if they can create that sort of experience, even on a smaller scale for Avengers, then I will continue to come back. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. I think they got a long road ahead of them. And right now the focus is going to be on just getting new characters out and getting kind of the mm-hmm. content that everyone wants. But when it comes to quality of life, move. yeah, what's that? I think that's the wrong move they're taking. I think they should focus so on too. something like the raids to have players wanting to jump in, like how I call it, jump into Call of Duty every week. It's just something that I can do on my sure. pastime. I know to, I could get all these different collectibles. You yeah. have your fans hooked. You make that really good. Then yeah. you in- introduce the story expansions. Then you introduce, you know, playing as all these different characters because that takes long in development yeah. mm-hmm, right yeah. um so you want to make sure that your fans are occupied by the core game that they're going to keep playing even when those characters kind of get stale um so that's why i think anthem had a better way to go about this because yes they had did have chance. that had yeah. a better chance the type of game it is it i feel like it would have been easier to create something like raids um i'm just happy that fans who already invested in anthem didn't like pay for battle like there were no battle passes or anything sure. like oh that. my god yeah that would have sucked if you've invested so much not only time but money i i think as well um well what i wonder uh could have been as well the big problem for anthem is at least with avengers even though even though they lost money they can survive on the ip like when mm-hmm. spider-man gets introduced i think a lot of people will end up buying avengers and be into it sure. if he looks cool enough right um but with anthem i'm assuming that game probably cost in terms of development close to if not maybe even more than what avengers costs you know I, at least i wonder sure. probably not more probably not more but close to what avengers costs from from a production standpoint and so when you put that much money into a brand new ip and want it to be a live service thing and then it kind of like comes crashing down pretty spectacularly um then that is the type of game where it's like what the hell can we do to to get people invested in this again because when it's when you have a new ip your people are in from the get-go right. or they will just kind of forget about it and it will wither away you know yeah. as as sad as that is that's kind of you see that in movies as well if you're going to create an original movie it's got to be something that's like that turns some heads or it will be just another movie that's released you know what i mean yeah. Um, and so that that was probably the tough situation for EA for Bioware with Anthem was that they had this new IP, they want to get people interested in the lore and the characters and everything. But when all that doesn't work out from launch, how are you how is it gonna be possible to reel people back in or create a new audience to get excited for this, uh, for the game? Well, not that you know, I, I know what the, the discussions were in those boardroom meetings, but I think I have to imagine as to a certain extent that they were confident enough to say, we're going to take the risk on this new IP yeah. knowing full well, we have dragon age and mass effect to lean on. That's true. I think that, that actually makes a lot of sense. That's the only thing like in, in my head, Bioware is such a single player narrative focused uh, studio that they could say, okay, well, we're going to do this live service game, see how it goes. And if it blows up, I mean, we always got Mass Effect, and we kind of yeah. saw that th- last year when they announced a new Mass Effect game, like a proper sequel to the franchise, where they're like, "Yeah, let's just do that." At Maybe the same we'll time, though, do, over. You, do you think though, like a live service game is the one, the, the thing you want to be taking the risk on? Because a lot of people, a lot of developers, I'm seeing where they want the live service to be the cash cow game for them. Right. You know what I mean? Well, like I think Avengers... that, that's part of the risk mm, is okay. seeing how a successful division is seeing how successful destiny 2 and the original destiny is i feel like yeah. there was a certain era where everyone was like what's our live service gonna be and yeah, then of course yeah. it takes three or four years for that game to come out when everyone's like well i got my destiny i'm already committed to this game right i don't want your game right they're, they're already too late to the I boat feel- you're absolutely right and also now when you're coming out with a live service game there are so many live ser- uh, service uh, games that do it just amazingly Mm -hmm. um that do it so well so the expectations are very different than when destiny first came out and you know when we look back at those games as well when they first came out and you know this type of game first emerging it took a while for it to get to perfection um you know that's the whole thing with games as a service um it takes some time to build that fan base then to do the updates so to me it just doesn't make sense for why publishers and developers will put so much money into building a lo- rushing, I would say rushing a live service. Game. Yeah. 
Because this seems to me like they were trying to run, like someone in a boardroom was just like, all right, we need, like you said, Steve, we need a live service game. Anthems, the closest yep. thing that would work, yeah. let's do it. And then yeah. they went into development, they announced that it's in the works, and then now two years later, they're like, okay, um, my bad. <laughs> we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and then you think about as well, if, they, if the rumors are correct. They do Mass Effect. Like Mass Effect as a live service game, I think would work so well. Uh, see, part of me agrees, but also part of me is like, if Bioware was able to push back and and get the creative freedom to make Dragon Age a single player RPG when it was originally meant to be live service, if rumors mm-hmm. are to be correct, then to me, it just sounds like they they do not know or do not care to figure out how to make a live service game mm. and make it work. Bungie, like when it came to Halo, they were always they always had a grasp on the multiplayer experience, the online sure. experience of gaming. Like granted they had amazing stories. Everyone loves Halo and knows Master Chief and and that mm-hmm. world, right? But at the end of the day, you remember Halo, at least for most people, for the multiplayer, you know, playing online Team Slayer, free for all, all that stuff, right? And so because Bungie always had that grasp on it, when they go into something like Destiny, they know what the people want when it comes to the online experience, whether it's the PvE or the PvP. Um, And so the Crucible is something, at least for me, that I always love to come back to when I jump back into Destiny. But as well, the raids and, and that cooperative experience that you get out of it, it's unmatched in any game that I've played, honestly. Uh, And I don't remember how long after Destiny's launch the raid came out, but I remember it being not too long after the launch of the game. Um, And the raid was like, it it changed everything for Destiny 1. When the Vault of Glass came out and everyone got to try out that raid for the first time and realized the level of difficulty, the way you have to be like interacting and working together with a full group of six people that are capable at playing the game, and as well the rewards that you can get from it, You know, some of the crazy exotics, the raid gear, the different uh, legendary weapons that you can even get from it. Like, it became this experience where everyone was like, we need to come back next week. Oh, uh, Joe Schmo didn't get the gun. We got to come back next week and run the raid again so he can get it, you know? And and so it it changed the game for, uh, for Destiny. Even though it was just one piece of content, it was the ultimate piece of content that that game needed to survive. And there's been no live service game that's had a rocky start since that's been able to have that same sort of magic capture, that lightning in a bottle. Right. No, I, I totally agree. And it it just feels like they struck lightning in a, in a bottle. I mean, they they figured it out. They they made the model for all intents and purposes, at least for as long as you're looking at it. console games. I don't know too much about like ongoing PC games as much, but Destiny just created that mold and so many people or so many developers and studios tried to capture that same thing and it's just unfortunate that in the case of anthem it just didn't work out and that's just kind of how game development works where people try to attack trends try to manipulate it and try to create their own spin on it yeah and sometimes the market just speaks and says this doesn't interest me or this is lacking that one component that made destiny so special that it's just not worth me, my uh, committed time to stick around, say with my friends, you know? Yeah, agreed. And I feel like a lot of developers and publishers are trying to, like you said, attain that um, that jackpot, that, that money-making game. But why can't we go back to the days when we have a developer who we know puts out a really good type of game? Um, they don't have to do everything. They just yeah. do, you know, single player games really well and, and that's okay. Um, so, or maybe they partner and maybe, you know, here Anthem and Bioware and EA, they should have partnered with a studio that knows or a team that knows, um, how to make a really good game service, um, just to understand that it's not as easy, easy. It's more complicated, um, than what we expect. So I don't know, uh, we'll probably never see them again as it, it appears. Um, maybe there'll be a revival you know, 20 years from now. And oh, we'll okay. We'll be like, remember Anthem? <laughs> Anthem again. It's beautiful. <laughs> I will say, though, I, I did like the kind of a rally cry a lot of the players had where they're like, you know what? We're going to go back to Anthem tonight. Like the day that the, oh, the that announcement happen? was made. Yeah, like a lot of people were just like, let's do it. Let's squat up and go back to Anthem for a night or two. I was like, that's, that's pretty that's rad. Cool. 
that's cool. Yeah. That must have been a nice uh, sort of a little experience for for Bioware to see just one last hurrah for exactly, Anthem. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anthem. I feel like we need like a little. We need a fade to black. A little like anthem. Twenty nineteen <laughs> to twenty twenty one. But uh, yeah, you know, EA is gonna keep making money. Bioware is gonna keep making uh, good games, hopefully. Fun. So yeah. fine. I just hope those devs that were working on Anthem um, continue to work in the games Agreed. industry yeah. and really bounce back. Um, from this or at least we're able to jump but, onto those know, other projects you know exactly yeah exactly yeah. exactly um but that's it pretty much from us for this week i know that we were going to talk um some other stuff but obviously you could tell malik kinda we did lose malik this bond. week unfortunately <laughs> we lost it this week i think it was me jinxing it off the top with you know kind of giving him <laughs> to watch wandavision that his internet's like yes camille and then cut <laughs> out <laughs> Well, I mean, now he doesn't have an option. He can't watch it. It was Agatha I mean, all along. There it is. <laughs> it was Agatha all along. Um, <laughs> I won't go into song. I know I don't want anyone's ears to bleed. Uh, but I will <laughs> ask, Steve, what do you have coming up this week on the website? Yeah, so uh, it's the brand new season of uh, Call of Duty Warzone. That's popping nice. off right now. Very excited. Uh, I've been getting into it a lot, so I'm going to have some content there. Also, I wanted to pitch this out to our lovely audience. I mean, we're surprisingly, we're right around the corner from the one-year anniversary of, of Warzone itself. So I wanted to uh, gauge the audience uh, uh eagerness on maybe doing like a year in review kind of conversation maybe next week uh, i can bring that to the table so if uh you guys listening uh, are interested you know you can reach out to us on on twitter i guess at squad state uh let us know if that's something that you guys would be interested to because you know i've been following the game for the full year been liking certain updates not liking other updates and i think that's a really cool conversation but yeah, yeah uh look forward to uh more on squadstate.com you can also follow me on twitter at svikvari yes uh, that would be a really cool conversation because um you know we all play warzone we haven't played together yeah. so odd no which um, is a which is a crime i think it's a crime. or maybe it's it happen. i i get really competitive in warzone i may say <laughs> things um <laughs> in war zone that i regret i'm sorry it's the toxicity of call of duty um, but yeah I, I look forward to that hopefully we can bring that conversation yeah. out i think a lot of people would enjoy that uh caboose how about you what do you have coming up still doing the streaming and youtube you know twitch.tv slash caboose youtube.com slash caboose got some really fun things planned for uh for my mortal Kombat tournament that i run with my buddy destroyer we got some some things to announce soon that I know people are going to be looking forward to. And then besides that, looking forward to the Mortal Kombat movie. We got the Hawkeye DLC coming this month on March 18th, as well as the next gen update for Marvel's Avengers. I'll definitely be covering that. And you can check out all my shenanigans on my social media, Twitch or sorry, Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. Awesome. Uh, for myself, I am here every week. Um, but other than that, you can find uh, my adventures at This Is Camco. I have some celebrations coming up for International Women's Day, which is on nice. March 8th. Nice. It's going to be very exciting. I will not be playing Call of Duty. Um, I I'm going to be playing a game. So oh, I, I, I'm secret. Probably, I'll keep, I'll keep secret. that for next week. Actually, All yeah. Right. Yeah, I will. Um, so yeah, tune into the Scamco on all the socials for that. But of course, every Monday, like I said, I'm back here with these lovely folks and Malik when he watches WandaVision, he will be back here <laughs> <laughs> chat about all things nerdy uh, and geeky in the gaming world. So tune in. And when we're not here, you could also read really cool articles on our website, squadstate.com and catch us on Squad State everywhere. Thank you guys so much for watching this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. And if you haven't learned anything at all, learn this from this episode. Oh. Watch one vision. Okay. We'll see you next week. <laughs>